Hello guys, today we're going to be comparing two video editors. Those video editors are Shotcut, which we have right here, and HitFilm. And we're going to be comparing them as per my point of view. Other people may have different point of view, but at the end of the video, I will show which one, which editor I would choose to edit my videos. So, for some background history in Shotcut, I have actually started Shotcut before using HitFilm. Then after about a month or so, I started using HitFilm for uh, different purposes and I want to come to a conclusion which one would I choose. So let's get started in Shotcut. So Shotcut, its appearance may not be good, but it has a very good accessibility to the user. So let's talk about the appearance. This is appearance for Shotcut and this is the appearance for HitFilm. As you can see, the HitFilm appearance is much better. It's more brighter, looks more organized, and Shotcut looks a bit dark and, well, just doesn't look good. But the key functionality here is really nice because you can easily trim the clip however you want it. Also, one advantage to hit to I mean a uh, shortcut is that it doesn't have any add-ons. Yes, in HitFilm that not all features have add-ons, but by endorsing add-ons, HitFilm wants you to buy their product. Shotcut does not promote any purchases or any sort of well payment. HitFilm has various versions like Pro, it has Starter, but you have to buy that. So to show you what I mean, I'll actually go in effects and I'll show you these add-ons. So this whole panel is with add-ons except these two bottom. So you actually, you can use this add-on but you would need to buy the add-on pack. And when you add any of these, it'll add a watermark. So it'll show hit film in the bottom right corner as where shotcut every single effect is free it's free to use and there are a bunch of effects and one thing I was kind of confused about for well hit film is that let's say if you search up text text is a really popular um, effect to video editors when you search up text it shows as an add-on and to remove the watermark, you would need to buy the starter pack. If I click on here, it'll take me to HitFilm and it'll show me to buy the starter pack to remove the, the watermark from the video. So that's one disadvantage to HitFilm, whereas, well, Shotcut, it doesn't have any watermark whatsoever, doesn't want you to buy anything. It's completely free. Now, Let's talk about the animations. So I actually switched to HitFilm because of its great use in animations. Animations, when I talk about animations, I don't mean actual video footage. These animations are just simply created using HitFilm. There's no other video involved. So there's colors, there's cool text appears. They have all that. And the way you can create this is by using a composite shot, which is basically kind of like a no video kind of thing. So when you go on editor, you'll see all the videos. Obviously you can put composite shot in your video. So, you know, if you wanna make a transition to like this animation and then go back to the video, that's perfectly fine. But if you just wanna focus on animation, then composite shot is really good. And if we go back into Shotcut, Shotcut, uh, I was trying to edit a 4K 60fps video and I didn't do it on this screen. I actually am doing the video right now on the desktop. But on my laptop, it is 4K. So I uploaded the video, the 4K 60fps video on my laptop, tested it between Shotcut and HitFilm. And Hit, I mean, Shotcut has had has actually worked better than HitFilm. So I just wanna make a note there. 
So, I want to talk about another thing, and it's called keyframing. Keyframing, when I found out about keyframing, it was really helpful. It can smoothly transition from each picture. So, if you want to zoom in, it'll smoothly zoom in. But the thing with shortcut is, let's say I have a pitch here, is a low pitch, so if I play this. I have here is y is greater than or equal That's actually my voice, I just enabled the pitch. But, here are my keyframes. If you click here, you'll go to the keyframes. And if you see this, this circle thing, this circle slider, it'll actually transition, smoothly transition. So the pitch will come in and completely be there at this point. But the problem with keyframes in Shotcut is that there's only two. So you have the starting point, the ending point, and all the way at the end you have a you know, ending point and then this other keyframe. Whereas in Shotcut, if I wanted to animate this, if I put in the anchor points, I actually did something here. When I'm keyframing this, here's the keyframe button by the way. When I'm keyframing this, you can actually do multiple keyframes. If this was shortcut, you could only do this and this. You maybe, probably, you would need to make another separate text box just to fill in this keyframe. But here you can make a bunch, a lot of keyframes. I don't know if there's a limit. But for as I know, you can make unlimited keyframes, which is really good if you want to make multiple transitions and text appears, such as like a wipe away or like basic appearances. So after some testing with Shaka and Hippo, here is my conclusion. You have Shaka, you have Hip Film, you have Hip Film, you have Shaka. Hit film, shotcut, hit film, shotcut. I chose shotcut because it has been very easy for me and once I got into hit film, it looked very complicated. So shotcut has always been easier for me. You can add in filters and you could, it's a really good uh, open source website for well, a free editing video editor. It's really easy for the user and I like it. But I'm not just gonna let go of hit film. You know when I talked about keyframing? Yeah, I switched to hit film for that. For animations or really cool text appears or something that can only done, be done in hit film, I would do animations in hit film and videos in shotcut. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my comparison between Shotcut and Hippo. So be sure to subscribe and like that button. See you later.